Forgiveness, it's an act of God. It comes from the heartbeat of Christ. He forgave each and every one of us on the cross. What do you consider unforgivable? What hurts have you experienced in your life? The number one myth about forgiveness is forgive and forget. We all were conceived into this world believing that this phrase alone, forgive and forget. But how do you forget about something traumatic in your life? How do you forget about a pain, a wound in your heart? You may ask yourself, we want to be more like Christ. Sure, we do. And the Bible clearly says in the book of Jeremiah, all the way from Hebrews, throughout the Old and New Testament, we see many scriptures of God himself forgiving our sins and forgetting them. There are plenty of scriptures out there that we can testify that these are the criterias. And to be more like Christ, sure, we ought to forgive. We need to forgive. Forgiveness is not for your offender, but forgiveness is for you. I kind of like to say it this way. Forgiveness is to set you free from a prison, from, from a lifestyle of shame, from a lifestyle of guilt, to be set free, to walk into your destiny, to actually run into your destiny. We don't forgive because people deserve it. We forgive so we can see again. My offender does not deserve my forgiveness. Your offender does not deserve your forgiveness. But we do it because it is part of the plan of God to run into our destiny. Forgiveness is an act of God. It's, it comes from His heart. It is His heartbeat. The number one myth, forgive and forget. God is omniscient. And of course, He forgives and forgets. But as human beings, we kind of fall into this trap of a Messiah complex. We think we can also forget. Of course we can forgive, but the problem is about forgetting is that we don't learn from the previous offenses of the past. See, God forgives and He forgets, but you and I are not like God. We have to, in our journey, in our walk in life, we have to remember the very things that were done to us so we don't fall into that trap. There have been studies that have shown proof of this. Studies of very serious cases, all the way from physical, emotional, and psychological abuse. People that have been abused since they were kids, and growing up and finding that their children are also being abused. But if they only remembered what they went through previously in life, if they would have remembered what their aunt or uncle did to them, and now their children are going through that same thing. They would have remembered the very pain they faced. And they would have remembered not going through that spot. We can forgive. We are called to forgive. But we need to remember that the myth about forgetting. Because if you easily forget, it is not an act of revenge. See, this culture, this world will tell you, for, forgive and don't forget because we're going to take revenge. It's not an act on on revenge, but it's an act on true forgiveness, an act of, of letting go of the past so you won't, you won't encounter that past ever again. This is the act of forgiveness that God has called us to. Christ has called us to radical forgiveness. What do we consider unforgivable? What has been done to you? Forgiveness is such a broad topic and it's a common topic. But at times, it's such an elephant in the room. And it leaves a stench in our lives at moments. What do you consider to be forgivable? Are all sins forgivable? In fact, do we need to reconcile with our offenders? Have you ever asked yourself that question? There are moments when we are offended. And as long as we have released forgiveness in our hearts, in our soul, in our spirits, with all of our might and power, with the help of God's grace, reconciliation sometimes is not even necessary. It was at the foot of the cross that even King Jesus experienced such anguish and pain of the journey of forgiving. Not one person at the foot of the cross can ask God himself, forgive us for what we have done to you. 
but yet we find in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, and it clearly says that Jesus said, forgive, for they don't know what they do. Do you think Jesus had time to go to each individual to ask, can we reconcile, can, can we bring closure to this? Jesus forgave freely. And Christ is asking us to go into a radical forgiveness. See, you have to understand that the Old Testament presents a certain law that you would only forgive if your offender would be repented. But Jesus forgave his betrayers, his offenders, even though they were unrepented. He forgave and he released it on the cross for each and every one of us. We all know that scripture, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever will believe in Him will not perish but have eternal life. This is the life that God has given us, to live in forgiveness. Once again, we choose to forgive for ourselves. Forgiveness is not for the offender, but forgiveness is for us. It is for you. It is for me. And forgiveness at the cross the power of forgiveness, when it was released, the power of forgiveness tore the curtain and gave us intimacy with Christ, gave us an intimate relationship with the one that we love. And this is how you forgive the unforgivable. This is how you're able to approach that offense that maybe happened five, 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, maybe just yesterday. This is how you approach the unforgivable. We choose to forgive, not because the offender deserves it, but because I want to see again. I want to run into my destiny. And this is how you forgive the unforgivable. Many people leave this earth without a forgiving heart. Many people perish without having a forgiving heart, a forgiving spirit. People perish. Alice passed away in 1906. Do you think she went through life with offenses? Do you think her heart did not forgive somebody? I don't ever want to perish on this earth without forgiving, without letting go, without being set free. But in a spiritual sense, God brings dead people back to life. And this is the great significance in the power of forgiveness.